What's actually going on? This is like 3 Destiny 2 videos in 3 days. I think I need to get my temperature checked, I'm sure of it. On a serious note, I do want to talk about the returning of the Vault of Glass. And what's now become a true possibility that other older raid exotics will make a comeback into the game among many many other things. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and today I bring you another Destiny video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like it really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. Also before we go any further, for all your gaming needs, no matter the platform you play on, at amazing prices and incredible weekly deals, check out G2A, link to in the video description. Now I'd first like to clear something up, as I'm seeing a lot of people calling this Bungie Content Vault BCV just Bungie doing their usual thing and being lazy. Insinuating this whole feature, which will arrive with Beyond Light on September 22nd this year, is just an easier way for Bungie to drop recycled content on us, saving them resources and time on creating new content for the game. Now, I can kind of see where people are coming from here, but for me, and what I've always wanted to see, is an all in one universe everything from Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 combined into a single game. Although it isn't quite possible due to limits beyond our control, but this Destiny Content Vault is the best way to do this. I think Bungie should just drop the two altogether and just call the game Destiny. The two is irrelevant if their true plan is just to expand upon the game we have now, which in my opinion is the right call as it gives us a clear view into the future and assures players Destiny is one of their main focuses, which is great and it seems to be the way. So the Destiny content vault for people out there that do not know or are not aware is a feature Bungie will incorporate where they can vault certain aspects of the game like a said destination or raid, and in turn add something new into the game or bring something back. Here listen to Bungie themselves, explain the feature and why it needs to happen. So Shadowkeep was cool and Shadowkeep brought back the moon and upgraded and enhanced it. And so we, we brought a destination out of the vault and you know spruced it up and that's where you got to play. We're not doing that with this fall's destination, Europa. It's a brand new place you've never been before. And both the Witch Queen and Lightfall are going to also include brand new, never before seen destinations. These expansions will stretch out across the timeline that's gonna bring much anticipated enemies to the forefront and hopefully deliver some twists, turns, drama that uh, we don't think anyone's gonna see coming. But to deliver these big content beats each and every year, and keep building on top of our seasonal experiences while making technological leaps forward, we also need to make some big changes to the way we treat some of our older legacy content. The stuff that maybe is getting a little long in the tooth that you're not really looking at and playing anymore, you're like, not- De Destiny, <laughs> Destiny 2 is a huge game. We have nine destinations, 40 story missions, 54 adventures, 42 lost sectors, 17 strikes, 31 PVP maps, seven raids, and hundreds of game systems that layer on top of that. I could go on, and I probably screwed up one of those numbers. The fact is, the game is too large to efficiently update and maintain. We're on track to be like 115 gigabytes on PlayStation alone, and our updates to the game are huge, and we're starting to reach the limits of our ability to patch. We don't want to start off from, from scratch and build a sequel. And in order to make a sequel, we would have to stop supporting Destiny 2. Like, it would effectively go dark. You know, we talk about a single evolving world. A single evolving world. Not multiple evolving worlds, <laughs> but a single evolving world. And we don't want people to have to start over. We don't want to have that loss of continuity with our game systems and our communities and all the players together. We don't want to put another number on the box. So instead, here's our plan. Each year, just as a new expansion comes out, we're going to cycle older, less actively played activity and destination content out of the live game and into what we're calling the Destiny Content Vault, the DCV. <laughs> Moving content into this vault is going to allow us to add support for D2 for years, including Beyond Light, the Witch Queen, and Lightfall. This vault is also going to allow us to take content from Destiny 1 
do some work on it, get it ready to come back into the Destiny 2 ecosystem. So we're not just going to be taking stuff away. We're also going to be going into those the classic vaults and kind of bringing some stuff back or unvaulting activity and destination content each year. Thinking about the greatest hits of Destiny, right? Like, what's, what are the new tracks we can lay down? What's something from the past that was like pretty cool that could be made even better if it existed today? And what, is, what does that look like? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that people there's a lot of awesome stuff that the team has built over the you know six years of six years of making Destiny and that Destiny 2 players totally have missed out on. Like later this year, Destiny 1's Cosmodrome is coming back this fall as a selectable destination. Its three strikes are also going to come back during season 12 and season 13. And part of the awesome thing here is a bunch of players haven't played Sepix. Sepix was the strike from the beta way back in like summer 2014. It is the like the oldest, it was like the definitive, most... the definitive, like original strike that yeah. we felt like hit the right notes. Yeah, in, in Destiny One, yeah. right? And yeah. we left all that behind when we made Destiny Two, and we're saying like, we don't want to do that again. Well, let's not do that again, but let's also reach into the past and like bring it into the present. And there's a lot of great content in our past, and maybe this year we'll see a, a classic raid come back. I think it'd be pretty amazing this year to see the Vault of Glass kind of unvaulted and returned in front of players. Like I can imagine things like champion Praetorians instead of just regular Praetorians and kind of updating it slightly to the modern context, uh, but still preserving that like classic feel. This fall when the expansion comes out, not only are we gonna be bringing back Cosmodrome and adding Europa, but we're gonna look at some of that content that's been in the game for a long time, that's been free, that isn't actively played, and that's, that's when some of that is gonna be vaulted. Well, after the show, we're gonna have a much more in-depth article that you can read on our plans for, for vaulting content on Bungie.net and why we're taking this unprecedented approach and what it means for the game this year and for the game going forward. Now it's clear in the future, we will see loads of new content in the Witch Queen and the Lightfall. This interests me. But what I'm most excited about is content we've already experienced being brought back. And like Bungie said, the Vault of Glass will return. This gives us clues as to what's actually possible in what can return. We also see the return of the Cosmodrome too, and all it strikes, while well, free at least. And this excites me. This basically means they can incorporate any aspect of D1 into D2. Imagine if they brought back the Loot Cave 2 on the Cosmodrome. Imagine that. All G players will remember. And it's what this video is about and what I want to discuss. If the Vault Glass returns, as they said it will, will it return with the classic weapons exclusive to it? They were. The Vision of Confluence. Wow, what a great weapon. The Found Verdict. Jeez, people, I love that shotgun. The Praetorian Foil. The Praedef's Timepiece. The Corrective Measure. I love this thing, the Hens and Vengeance, the Atheon's Epilogue, and the most popular legendary hand cannon ever, the Fate Bringer. And then guys we have the original beast, the original OG beast, the Vex Mythal class. Wow what a weapon this was, do you remember it originally back in the day before its nerf? It was stupid OP. So the question stands, will these return alongside the Vault of Glass raid? If I had to guess, I would say they are, but you just never know. Maybe we'll see new versions of them. Maybe we'll see a new version of the Vex. We just do not know. But if I had to guess, I will think they will just bring these back. Just put a few added bonuses on them. Remember also people, these legendaries were revamped late in Destiny 1. I believe it was year 3. And they returned as adept weapons. These were exotic and amazing additions. But it goes beyond the Vault of Glass in terms of things that could return. There were a few other raids too. Crota's End with the Necrochasm, the King's Fall with a touch of malice, and then we had the Wrath of the Machine with the countless weapons available here too, besides the Outbreak which we already have. And then you have features like the Arkans Forge, the Prison of Elders, and much much more. It is really interesting to me to see how they will incorporate said places and destinations into the game. And it's starting off with the number one place I think many of us would return or bring back. And that is the Vault of Glass Raid. I mean, if you're a D1 player and you don't miss this thing, I mean, you need to give your head a shake. I mean, to be honest, it's kind of a shame they don't just vault to PvP and work on PvE. That would be great. Yes, people, I'm joking. You know, I tweeted this out earlier and some kid thought I was serious. I mean, like, please, kid, go outside and get some fresh air. To be honest, I probably like PvP more than PvE at the minute. 
because PvP is just straight up killing. PvE has got all that lore involved and I'm just so far behind, I don't know what's happening. But I am catching up people, I really am. But yeah guys, the idea of Bungie Vault in certain dry aspects of the game and bringing old places back, in my book, is amazing and it's the best of both games. It's the better feeling of game which is Destiny 2 obviously, mixed with the best experiences possible in Destiny 1. What more could you ask for? Guys tell me down below what you think about this. What would you most like to see return from Destiny 1 besides the Vault of Glass raid and anything associated with it? Me personally, if I had to bring one thing back from D1 I think you guys know what it would be, it would be the Nolan Beyond. But what would you bring back? Weapon? Piece of armour? Not the Twilight Guys and Titans, I see ya. But what would you bring back? Let me know. On that note, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Destiny, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. Also, if you'd like to support me directly, you can by hitting that join button and becoming a member of my channel. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.